Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio, and I hope you're well today. I know I am. I'm thankful, and what a joy it is to bring God's Word to you, uh, whether you're viewing this on a Saturday or a Sunday or throughout the week. I'm glad you're part of this, and what we're doing here is to just try to get the Word of God out to help encourage you to help others come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Amen? Well, we're going to continue in our study on select topics of the book of Proverbs. And today we want to talk about our speech, our speech, how we talk, every word that we speak. It really does matter, and we're going to talk about that today. We know that Colossians 4, 6, uh, Paul tells us, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So he says that our, our, our words should be graceful, not hateful, but graceful. Uh, Psalms 19.14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the med meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. What's he saying here? It was That's a prayer saying, God, I want my words to reflect you, to bring glory to you. Ephesians 4.29 says, let no corrupt uh, communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that may minister grace to the hearers. As a matter of fact, the King James Bible, uh, the word speech is used 58 times. 58 times. In other words, how we speak really does matter. Uh, questions come up, is it all right for, uh, for people to, uh, to, to curse? Um, what if we get angry? How should we address that in communicating that? And those things come up, don't they? But, you know, I think our, you know, you think of 58 times God has covered those things that are concerning to us because we do want the words of our mouth to bring glory to God, don't we? Well, we, we have verse after verse. We have Ephesians 4, 29, Colossians 4, 6, Matthew 5, uh, 15, 11. Ephesians 4.32, Colossians 3.12, James 4.11. And you kind of go on and on and throughout Scripture, and we're told over and over again that you and I are to watch how we speak. Psalms 141.3, Proverbs 15.1 uh, and 2, Proverbs 15.4, Proverbs 21.23, Proverbs 16.24, Ephesians 5.4. You kind of go through all these, James 1.26. Over and over again, that how we speak really does matter. Why? Because it, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So how we speak really is a reflection of our spiritual maturity, whether we're, we're really spiritually mature or we're, we're struggling in that area. And so sometimes people will say, well, I didn't really mean to say it. I was only angry. Well, you did reflect your heart. Uh, you may not have said it maybe in the manner that you wanted to say it, in anger or whatever else, but whatever you said really was a reflection of your heart. Sometimes you'll say something, you'll say, I didn't even know I felt that way, right? Um, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, that stuff kind of comes out. So our words reveal our spiritual um, our maturity in, in Jesus Christ. So after 58 times in the Bible, we can conclude that words are important to God and they should be important to you and I. They should be important to our, our relationships and how we deal with others when people will frustrate us and, and we get angry and so forth. And so you and I ought to heed the warnings that come along with how we speak. God warns us about lying, for instance. We see that in Proverbs 12, 22. We see it in the Proverbs 6, 17 through 18. Proverbs 12, 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that are true, uh, but that they that deal truly are his delights. Lying lips are an abomination. Isn't that interesting? Because we often think uh, and tie abomin uh, an abominable act of that of homosexuality or something like that. But even the words of our mouths can be abominable. We, we kind of tend to classify lies, don't we? These are big lies. These are little lies. These are little white lies. I just skirted around the truth and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, it's there's lying lips, a lying tongue, 
bearing false witnesses uh, are, are an, uh, an abomination to the Lord. And, and in truth, we're warned in Proverbs 12, 19, Proverbs 20, 17, Proverbs 21, 6, that lies are never totally covered up. Eventually, uh, what we've lied about will come, uh, come out. Proverbs 12, 19 says, The lip of truth shall be established forever. Truth is truth. It was tr what was true in David's day is certainly true today. He goes, but a lying tongue is for a moment, is for a moment. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. We teach our kids, don't we? We don't have to teach them how to lie, but boy, we have to instill in them the value of truth. You know, I, I sometimes, I'm still dealing with, uh, with 13 year olds. I have twin 13 year olds and, and you know, we, we think we get beyond that lying but you know in truth the lies of a four-year-old and the lies of a 13 year old are just more sophisticated right and uh they 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 think they can hide it better than they did but after raising all the kids that we have and i was a school principal for 10 years i i've kind of learned a few things and and they don't get away with too many things uh and, and that idea of you're going to be found out just take the consequences for whatever you did wrong. Stop lying and just tell the truth. Be honest. If we can't trust you with the little things, we certainly will not trust you in big things, right? So lying will eventually destroy the testimony of the liar. It, it, it destroys trust. And, uh, and oftentimes it'll, it'll hurt others, the, the ones that we're lying to and the ones we're lying about, right? So God warns us that lying is never right. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Something to think about. Uh, God also warns us about the gossip. The gossip. Those who spread rumors. The talebearer, the Bible talks about. The slanderer. The whisperer. Uh, Proverbs eleven thirteen. Those who reveal secrets. Those who lie or insinuate um, things about others. Boys, they sure are spending a, long, a lot of time together, aren't they? Well, you're, what are you saying there? Are you saying that they're having an affair? Are you are saying that, uh, that they're doing something uh, devious? What are you saying there? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying they're spending a lot of time together. No, you're insinuating something's going on. And listen, many a church and many a pastor... Have been uh, whose reputations have been destroyed because someone uh, either gossips or slanders. And listen, I'm not talking about covering sin up. You don't cover sin up, but you know you don't. What you don't know, you don't talk about. And some things are simply not your business. I know that have had to come strong on people because they wanted to gossip about other people. They wanted to know what's happening in other people's homes. Well. You know, it's, it's not your business. It's not your business. I'm the pastor. If I think there's sin in that in, over there, then I'll, I'll take care of it. It's not your business, and I'm not going to reveal what's happening in their home to you. Listen, take the, take the beam out of your own eye because I can sit here and talk about the, that beam that continues to come up and stop worrying about the speck in somebody else's eye. You handle your own business. But the gospel doesn't do that, does it? They like to stir things up. They're, they're pot stirrers. And, um, and you and I, you know, you, we have to be careful if we're uh, enticed by the gossip. We like to hear juicy gossip. We like to hear when things go wrong or something, something um, uh, wild is, is about to take place, don't we? But we need to remember that the ones who gossip about others will eventually gossip about you. Uh, what makes you any different? Uh, than, than the ones that they're gossiping about. You need to stay away from them. You need to rebuke them uh, because gossip uh, uh, creates discord. They'll, call, they'll break up families. They'll break up relationships. They'll certainly break up a church. We see that in Proverbs 16, 27 through 28. Proverbs 26, 20 through 22. And you know, gossip really reveals more about the, uh, the talebearer, the slanderer, 
the gossip, the, who, the one who's telling you the gossip, than the one who's being slandered. Uh, gossip n never helps. It always hurts. It's like putting gas on a fire. Listen, if you have gossip in your family, you need to stop that gossip. If you have gossip at, at, at work, you need to uh, stop that gossip. If you have gossip at church, you need to stop those who are slandering others. Like I said, many a church has been split because of the tongue. The tongue is the most dangerous member of every church. It destroys character. It destroys reputations. It will destroy the church. And so we need to heed this warning. Let me tell you, warn you this. If you're a gossip, if you like to spread tales, you know what? You're, you're in, a, in violation of God. You need to get your life in order. You need to start worrying about your own house and start worrying about what's going on with you rather than worrying about what's happening in other people's house. Well, I just want to make sure that everything's fine. I just want to make sure that... Uh, that she's really not stepping out on him. I just want listen, listen. Um, if you have a problem with someone, we go back to Matthew 18, and you go to them personally before you go to anything, anyone else. You go to them personally and say, "Hey, I've noticed that this is going on. I haven't said anything to anybody, but I'm just concerned about you. Be careful. All right, and let's leave it there." Confess that sin and forsake that sin. God also warns us not only about lying, but like gossip, but also about profane speech, cussing, coarse jokes, foul language, blasphemy. Um, you know, we're warned over and over again that our our speech should be um, seasoned with grace, should be truthful, should be honest, should be. Uh, used to build up, not to tear down. We're warned that even as a, a in the Old Testament that those who cursed their parents, who dishonored their parents, could be stoned to death. It was a capital offense when someone uh, cursed their parents. Proverbs twenty twenty, Exodus twenty one seventeen, Leviticus twenty nine, verse nine. It was under the Mosaic law, uh, dishonoring one's parents through verbal or physical abuse was a capital offense. Why? Because as the family goes, so goes the nation. And a parent should be teaching their kids to, uh, to honor them, to respect their authority. Because if they don't respect their authority in the home, they're not going to respect the authority outside the home. And under the Mosaic Law, that was not tolerated. And it should not be tolerated in your home. You got a, a kid who uh, who threatens you. You got a kid who, I don't care if he's one year old or he's uh, 58 years old, and he's threatening you, you need to get him out of that house. Or not, not a child, of course, but you need to deal with it. Do not put up with uh, pro, uh, any kind of uh, trouble verbal trouble or physical trouble with children in your home. You and I are also warned about cursing or cussing to other people, maligning people, Proverbs 30, verse 10. We are, again, to build up and not to tear down. There are constructive ways to talk without having to use foul language. You know, it always troubles me when people curse. People say, well, I, don't, I used to curse, but I don't curse anymore, and then three words later, they're cursing. And, you know, I get it. I understand that it takes a while to uh, clean up that language. And what I have found throughout the years is that oftentimes when you, people get saved, that's the first thing that begins to clear up is, is how a person speaks. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so you and I need to, uh, if, if we have a problem with cussing, we need to give that over to God. God, I, I don't want to curse anymore. I want to bless not curse. I want to honor and not dishonor other people. I want to be able to resolve issues without that foul, destructive language. Amen? Amen. So God warns us about lying. He warns us about gossiping. He warns us about uh, cursing. You, we better conclude that all through this is that speech really does matter to God, doesn't it? Proverbs uh 
10, 20 through 21 says, The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. He's saying here that words can either bring life, they can encourage, they can build up, or they can destroy. They can destroy. We have a choice. We can correct in a proper manner. Ever been around a boss who curses all the time, who belittles, who bites and bites and bites verbally at his employees and and his employees don't want to be around people like that, do they? They don't want to. They don't want to hang around someone like that. They want someone who encourages them, who corrects them in the right manner, who who builds them up. I don't know why so many people act the way they do. He says that choice words, the tongue is like uh, the tongue of the just, those who who walk in the integrity of their of, of their relationship with Jesus Christ. Is valuable it's like choice silver it is worth being around someone like that he said it brings joy Proverbs 16 24 it says it's as sweet as honey uh, tasty you can't get enough of it it's like having a bag of those favorite cookies of yours and you 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 want to just get one but then you got three then maybe you go back later on and grab a three more of those cookies right because they're so tasty. That's the way it is about being around people who build up. You just want more and more of them. They're encouraging. You feel good. The world is tearing you down, but you want to be around people who build you up. Amen. Not that false, sugary sense, but those who generally have your best interest at heart. And uh, it says it's sweetness to the soul. It is health to the bones. It brings comfort, Proverbs 12, 25. It, um, it helps the anxious. It helps the depressed. It, uh, it encourages them in their walk with Jesus Christ. And so, remember that speech reveals your heart. Out of the abundance of the mouth, the hearts, I mean, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we want to be around people who have a good heart, who know how to speak, who know how to encourage because those words really do matter. Don't you ever think about someone who, who said something caustic to you in the past and you continue to rehearse them, don't you? And maybe decades later, you remember something that someone said about you. And uh, I remember someone saying that about me one time. This is maybe in the 90s. And, uh, uh, you know, that people... Yeah, really? Marvin? Marvin got that? Marvin got... You know, and I thought, you know, uh, I, you know, and it still sticks with me. It still sticks with me. As someone who lied about me in years past, you know, it still sticks with me. Well, the same is true about good words, don't they? When someone says something nice about you. I remember after maybe a couple of decades, I met up with my, my old pastor, Pastor Herb Fitzpatrick, and Lois Fitzpatrick, and I remember uh, Lois was the pastor's wife, and she had what what grace, what what a wonderful pastor's wife she was, she is, or she was, and um, you know she said something so out of the blue, so nice about me that I still remember as a fifty-nine year old, and that the truth, because she. I, I had always valued her so much, and I did not realize that uh, that uh, she valued me that way. And uh, it just meant so much to me. It still means that much to me. And those words we can feed into others. We can encourage others. He, he says they're as beautiful as apples of gold in a uh, apples of gold uh, uh, in a setting of silver. In other words, he's saying they're beautiful. They catch your eye. You remember those things. And so it benefits you and I to measure our words. Someone has rightfully said that God has given you two eyes and two ears and one mouth. Two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. We need to listen more. We need to see more. And maybe we should talk less. And when we talk, we shouldn't be, uh, maybe it should be 
measured words. We should know how to speak uh, in a proper manner. Godly men speak in a godly manner. Godly women speak in a godly me uh, manner. Well, I just needed to give them a piece of my mind. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You can stand your ground. You don't have to be a doormat, but you can say it in a proper manner. Uh, not curse at them, not threaten them in any way. Uh, Proverbs 13, 2 through 3. Proverbs 15, 1 through 2. Uh, Proverbs 21, 23 talks about the words preserving life. And uh, uh, it preserves the life of th those you're speaking to, but also preserves the one who's speaking, right? You don't get yourself into trouble making promises that you can't keep, make, threatening people and uh, when you can't back that up. Uh, it keeps one's soul from trouble. Um, it also reveals, uh, when we measure our words, it reveals uh, 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 self-control, restraint, and certainly our spiritual maturity. Proverbs 10, 19. Proverbs 17, 28. Well, we'll close here. I, the problem is, is that as James said, of a, a, a man who is able to bridle one's tongue is a mature man, right? He is a perfect man uh, or woman. And the fact is, is that we can be good for 15 days and one moment at, uh, at the wrong time, at the wrong, uh, doing, uh, at the, you know, in the wrong situation, words can come out of our mouth that, that we didn't even know were, were there, right? And so it behooves all of us to begin to pray about our words, pray about how we speak, Analyze how we're maybe treating our children, our spouse, the people at work. Do we enjoy coarse jokes? Are we the gossip? Are we the liar? Do we have those little white lies? We don't tell the whole truth, but we just tell the things that kind of get us out of tr trouble. There's lies, and, and so people don't trust us any longer. We need to reveal that to God. We need to confess that before God. We can't be a gossip. We can't be a... Uh, a, uh, a slander. We can't um, be a liar. We can't curse. These things, we can't be threatening in our words. We need to get control of that little member that causes the body. As James says, such a, a huge fire. It destroys people. It destroys our reputation and it destroys re uh, reputation. I mean, our relationships, don't they? We need to confess that as sin before God. Listen, I would imagine that everyone here speak, I'm speaking here today has a problem with that because I still have a problem with it. And um, I don't curse. I'm not trying not to lie. I try not to this and that and everything else. Um, but you know, it, it, it's that, that daily, that daily, that daily, moment by moment issue in our lives, don't we? Amen. It's someone rightfully say that tongue is such a dangerous members. And that's why God put either the teeth in front of it to keep our keep our mouth shut, to keep that thing from getting out. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Don't let your mouth uh, say something and do something that could ruin your testimony or ruin, uh, uh, hurt, hurt someone in their walk with Christ or their relationship of even getting saved, right? We need to measure our words. Be wise, be be slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to speak. Amen? Well, let me ask you this. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you born again? My Bible says that uh, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The whosoever's include you. I'm a whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm a whosoever. And you know, that includes you. Are you saved? Are you born again? I want you to pray and say, Dear God, I repent of my sins. I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior today. Please come into my life and save me now and save me forever. Make me eternally yours. S save me now, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you and I love you as well. You have a blessed day.